solution to the housing crisis that everyone's telling you needs to uh, there's no silver bullet to the uh, the housing crisis that we're living through. It's going to take uh, all hands on deck across levels of government, with the private sector, with the nonprofit sector. Uh, but we're going to need to do a series of different things. We're going to need to advance measures that are going to help change the financial equation for builders who are dealing with uh, a lot of projects that are actually approved but been put on pause because of a higher interest rate environment. Uh, we're also going to need to work to change the way that cities build homes by issuing permits more quickly, changing their zoning practices to make it easier for builders to build. And we're also going to need to grow to the productive capacity of the workforce by training Canadians to work in home building, by recruiting uh, newcomers who have the skills we need to build, and by investing in innovation like building homes and factories so we can actually be more productive uh, with the uh, assets that we have, with the investments that we make. Uh, we're going to be looking at everything we can do to build homes more quickly so we can make homes affordable for ordinary people. That's not too much to ask. Are you worried? Are you? Is it going to be new what you're coming up with? Uh, with the announcement today. Uh, today is going to be uh, uh, the first time that we've uh, done something like this in Canada and I don't want to spoil the, uh, the news that we're going to share a little later this, uh, uh, this morning. Uh, but you should also uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, this morning's announcement uh, is one of uh, a series of measures we're going to be advancing over the course of the fall that are going to have a meaningful impact to get more homes built in this country. Are you worried that you've lost the confidence of Canadians already? Uh, look, uh, my, my perspective is that if people see us uh, getting to work, uh, they're going to uh, have an opportunity to judge whether our plan is going to be effective. Uh, with uh, respect to uh, uh, people who make the, uh, the argument that uh, the, the time has com uh, come and gone to, to make a difference, I think you should always be working to uh, solve problems. Uh, the reality is the dynamic has changed over the last number of years. When we first arrived in office in 2015, uh, the greatest need when it came to housing was for uh, socially publicly funded social housing for low-income families. Uh, that need still persists, but the dynamic has fundamentally shifted. What we've seen over the course of the pandemic with uh, people initially uh, buying up homes uh, during the pandemic putting more pressure on the stock, followed by a uh, hike in the interest rates that are impacting home builders and the environment and impacting people who hold mortgages, particularly those who have a variable rate mortgage, uh, we see that the, the need is now just not for low-income housing, but for homes for, for middle-class Canadians. Uh, people who are going to school deserve to have a place near their classes. People who are going to work deserve to have a home near where they go to work, and everybody deserves to be able to have a home, a home they can afford near the services that they need to access. Uh, my expectation is that uh, Canadians... Uh, uh, want to see what we're going to be coming up with over the next number of months. They want to see from me personally, uh, being new to the position, uh, what kind of a changed approach. And they should expect to see a renewed focus that's looking to build homes, not just uh, for low-income Canadians uh, in affordable housing projects, uh, but across the housing spectrum uh, to make sure we're building homes for middle-class Canadians too. Uh, folks, I, I am Minister lost the audience. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, what is the move going into Ontario caucus? Great. Listen, we have a fantastic team and very excited about talking about Canadians' priorities. And, and how we're going to attack those. You're not concerned about the Coletto polling? Look at polling numbers go up and down all the time. The focus for me is on what I'm hearing at the doors and in my conversations and at the round tables that I'm doing, um, particularly across southern Ontario, that's my focus. But this opportunity gets voices from across the country and uh, really excited about the conversations that are going to happen. And we know Canadians are struggling now and uh, we're hearing that loud and clear. So we as a government have to determine what are the next steps that we're going to take to ensure that we take Canadians through this challenging time. Yeah. So it's not just a little up and down. I say, no, I'm not saying it's up and down. I'm saying, listen, we always listen to the voice of Canadians and we want to respond to that. I don't focus on the numbers. I focus on what I'm hearing from Canadians across the country and really getting down to work to ensure that we are addressing the concerns that Canadians are voicing, like housing and affordability. So we have the team that can tackle this. We absolutely do. And I am so confident in this team. Having said that, we are totally understanding of what Canadians are going through and we look forward to addressing the concerns that they are having with practical solutions that are going to get people through these challenging times. Is confidence in the Prime Minister shaken right now? Not for me. Listen, this Prime Minister has led us through the most challenging times. Look at what we've been through with COVID. And I have heard from a number of, of uh, uh, my own constituents, but people across the country, that were very grateful for the supports. Um, and so for me, I think that uh, our Prime Minister has taken us through some of the most challenging times that this country has faced and I know he's up for the challenge ahead 
and I look forward to the discussions over the next couple so do you days. So do you need to torque up your communications uh, game at this point then? I think what we need to um, torque up is to focus on the work that we are doing for Canadians. We have to deliver and what that means is listening to what Canadians are telling us and ensure that we are responding to those very important pressing issues and I look forward to the work. Thanks so much. Uh, Minister Jolie said there's new measures coming on housing and affordability. Last week you seemed to suggest that it's only communications that are needed to improve. Did I? Uh, outside of the Conservatives, you said we need to stay the course on childcare and these sorts of things. Do you need new measures and what do those new measures need to include? I, if, I, if I somehow indicated that we didn't need to do more things to help Canadians uh, with affordability issues and, and certainly do more on, on things like, like housing, then uh, that's certainly not my intention. I, I, I agree with Minister Jolie and other colleagues who say that we need, we need to do more on, on things like housing and, and affordability. And, and part of the, the conversations we will be having in the coming two days are what exactly are, are these things uh, that, w that we will be doing. As you know, the Prime Minister will be making an announcement a little bit later today on, uh, on housing. Is it fair the criticism that uh, the Liberals have been slow in getting out a plan that perhaps you've been caught flat-footed? On what? On housing, getting a plan out. This is, I mean, the, the, the housing crisis has been decades in the making. Uh, it's not. It, it's nothing. It, it's nothing new. So you saw it, uh, it, it could. It could go. You could go back to the early '90s, where the federal government decided to stop investing in, in in housing and told provinces and territories that that was their responsibility. We changed that when we came in in 2015 with massive uh, programs, and we are we are seeing more housing being built, but but not enough. And and we need to do more. And certainly, the federal government has an important role to play. It's not something we can do by ourselves. We need to work with provinces. We need to work with municipalities, we need to work with the private sector, and that's what we're hard at work doing. Yeah, you know, at the Conservative Convention, at the carbon tax is now a bumper sticker. Uh, it's been for that? some time. Yeah. For some time, but the, certainly when you look at the polling numbers, they, that, is, that message continues to gain traction. What do you say to the Canadians that believe, yeah, my affordability or lack of affordability is tied to what I'm paying now for home heating, for gas, for groceries? Um, we, when we talk about the cost of measures to address climate change. We, we, we have to realize that Canadians are paying a very high price tag for the impacts of climate change. Uh, in the past few years, we're talking about tens of billions of dollars, and that's not accounting for the forest fires we, we've seen this summer, which were the worst in, in Canada's history. Uh, tens of thousands of people being being moved from their homes. Entire entire cities uh, had to be had to be evacuated. Floodings in, in Nova Scotia. Uh, just at the end of winter, we had ice storms in, in in eastern Canada. Climate change is costing Canadians billions, tens of billions of dollars, and we need to act. And there's no there's no bumper sticker solution to climate change. It's hard work, and we know that carbon pricing is one of the best ways to fight climate change. So what do you say, though, and I appreciate that, but that's, your, that's a national budget, but for people at home, it's their monthly budget. But they're, 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 pa they're paying for that. I mean, if, if it's costing... If it's costing Canada tens of billions of dollars of climate impacts, you don't think people at home are paying for that one way or the other? They are. Everyone, all of us are, are paying for that. And, and we need to put in place measures so that our kids and grandkids aren't stuck with a planet that, that in some parts of the world may become unlivable. That's what, that's what we're doing. That's what a responsible government needs to do. And, 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 and yes, there are challenges with, with affordability and we're working very hard, which is why, for example, we're recycling 90% of the revenues of of, of carbon pricing directly to households to help them in, in this transition to, to a low carbon economy, but it's going to take some time and, and hard work and, 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 and bumper sticker slogans won't help us to fight climate change. Mr. Guibault, do My you think question. that uh, the wildfires, the climate change, the impact of climate change will impact how much money the federal government can devote to affordable housing? And is that an issue that perhaps because of limited resources we shouldn't be expecting that much or that will limit your ability? Housing and affordability. Certainly housing and affordability are top of mind in my community and across the country and at this caucus we will be definitely having conversations about how we can continue to step up to address affordability issues. Uh, things like the Canada Child Benefit, $10 a day child care, um, making sure that we are there for Canadians on housing and on, on items relating to vulnerability are top of mind for sure. Is the caucus firepower to be cut for that though for having cutbacks in the park? Well, if you take a look at the spending review, it's 
15 billion dollars over five years and four billion dollars every year thereafter that relative to the total spend should not impact our priorities on housing, on affordability, on vulnerable Canadians. And so we're going to continue to be focused on those priorities while making sure that our own fiscal house is in order. And that's what all Canadians are doing right now and that's what the Government of Canada will do. Is the caucus shaken right now? Is the caucus shaken by the polling numbers? Uh, caucus is very much focused on what we need to do to continue to support Canadians. And that is a very distinct difference between us and other parties in this country, that we are focused on how we can support Canadians, especially during difficult times. That's exactly what you saw our government do during the pandemic, for example. The procurement of vaccines, PPE and rapid tests was about stepping up to make sure that our country had what it needed during difficult times. This is exactly what we will continue to do during this economic time in Canada's history. Thank you. Our focus is on Canadians. That's what my focus has been as MP and Minister and that's what our focus I'm sure will continue to be. Thank you so much. What's the mood in Ontario? The mood's great. We're halfway through uh, a mandate. We've been delivering a lot uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Canadians and for Canadians, and there's still more work to be done. We're looking forward to, to discussing what's going to happen in the next two years. So what do you make of the polling that? numbers then? Well, the polling polling goes up, polling goes down. I think it's great that Canadians are being exposed to Pierre Polyev. I think that once they start to learn about who he is, what he's voted for, what his values are, it's going to really shape their opinion of him. So I think it's important that uh, uh, the population, that, uh, that Canadians have access to that. Is the Prime Minister still the best asset for your party? I'm really excited to go into the next election. I'm really excited with the team that we have, and that includes a Prime Minister, obviously, and uh, I think uh, I think uh, it's going to be a really good uh, election. I'm looking forward to it. It's, there's a clear contrast between us and the other guys now, and I think that Canadians will see that. Thanks. i got to get in there. i got to get in there. Thank you. What are your constituents telling you about affordable housing? What do they want to see? Uh, they want to see more and more housing, more construction, and that, that's a challenge. We see numbers going down across the country, and we have to be there to support you know, more housing and, and maybe, in a way, work better with provinces and cities. Is there something, a recommendation that would work better in Quebec than anywhere else? Well, <laughs> faster, better, quicker. Uh, that works everywhere. Um, and this is what we're here actually to discuss and, and have uh, full confidence in my colleague uh, Fraser to, to do the job. But do you think you'll come up with a plan? You had this in PEI. You had a bunch of experts coming. Did you all yeah, and we listened to them and we, we had many deep discussions about it and, and we're working on it. It's not a, there's not a simple, easy solution where you can just turn around and, and, you know, and build thousands of, of, of you know, units. The, the objective is to build thousands of units as soon as possible, but we have to do it right. And again, I think we have to find ways to better work with provinces and, and cities. So what do you say to people? What's good? You know, I'm just wondering how you, how your colleagues are feeling right now with the polling numbers as they have been this summer. Uh, I mean, polls tell part of a story. Uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, I think the, uh, the work that we have to try to pull the country together on the big issues like climate change and housing. Housing's the current issue. Climate change hasn't gone away. We're look, looking at what's going on with the weather events in Morocco now. The forest fires in Canada all summer, uh, we have to focus on the work that we have to do. And uh, hopefully Canadians will see the work coming through and that we're delivering results. And hopefully we are delivering results and that'll show up in polls at some point. But uh, if we start chasing polls around the room, we're not doing the work that we need to do. I'm wondering though if there's a level of dissatisfaction or, or concern right now though. No, I mean, the concern is we've got to solve the problems that we have on the table in front of us, and that's our responsibility. People can talk about the problems, people can talk about their opinions of the problems, but our responsibility is to find solutions to the problems and uh, get the governments working together on housing with the stakeholders, make sure that we land on the right place there. Um, climate change isn't going away, and um, I sit on the Environment Committee and looking at the, the new uh, Environmental Protection Act measures that we're going to be working on this fall. We've got a lot of work to do that we are doing, and um, at some point we'll look up at the scoreboard, but right now we're in the middle of a game that we have to win. 
At this point, though, you know, I just came from Quebec City listening okay. to conservatives, and for them, yeah. it's you know, they do talk about housing, but it's also affordability, and that goes to the carbon tax. What do you make of the affordability issue? For because for them, if you get rid of the carbon tax, you make things more affordable yeah. for Canadians yeah. across the board. They, for people that say that they're business people, they don't act like business people sometimes. The carbon price that we have also has a rebate and they never talk about the other side of the ledger. So what we have done is put in a measure to incent people to reduce the use of carbon and if they reduce the use of carbon then the incentive payment that they come get coming back to them they get to keep. If they keep using carbon they have to that, that incentive payment doesn't go to anywhere other than paying for more carbon. Um, so the, the really the, the market-based solutions that we put in for reducing the use of carbon is something that we're firm on because they make sense and they make economic sense. Uh, I come from business. I know when you focus on the areas that uh, you're spending your money on, uh, you will get results based on where you're putting the proper investments. So we are investing in reducing the use of carbon and we're doing that in a way that also uh, uh, doesn't have a solid impact on individual Canadians. So. You know, I'm listening to that, and I, I, I'm thinking about the conservative messaging. Very consistent since Pierre Polyev became leader. Axe the tax, axe the tax, tax yeah, right? So, sure. the, so is this a? Do you think that part of the challenge for the Liberals is policy? Part of it communication? Where do you see the issue right now? I think we've got the right policy. Um, when you go up against axe the tax, um, it's a bumper sticker. Uh, we can't rule by bumper, bumper stickers. Uh, we have to put in good policy. And when you look at what's going on with the climate right now, it's not going to solve itself. It's something that we have to have good government policy on all levels to fight the climate crisis that we're in. And uh, it's, it's unfortunate that um, the discussion isn't at the right level from the other side, um, where they don't even agree that there is a climate crisis. Um, at some point they need to wake up and see that we are in a climate crisis and we need good policy. If they can suggest better ideas, we need to discuss those, but ax the tax isn't one of those good ideas. Uh, do you think the leadership of uh, the Prime Minister is at question right now? No. No. I think we've got a, a strong leader uh, that's taking a lot of flack because there are a lot of issues that we need to deal with. Um, and. Um, when you're in a leadership position, you're the one that takes the flack, but the team is working together to try and get to a better place in terms of coming out of COVID, dealing with the COVID wave that we'll deal with this fall. Um, that hasn't gone away. And then at the same time, uh, get us through the, uh, the uh, higher interest rate uh, area where we are right now so that we can get inflation back to where it needs to be. And so the, the Bank of Canada's doing what they need to do to get inflation down and we need to make the adjustments to help vulnerable Canadians get through the inflation cycle that we're in right now. Lloyd, thanks for the time. Yeah, you're welcome. Cheers. Have a good caucus meeting. Yeah. There's a small group of demonstrators that were outside the hotel circling around last night. The police came, they're lighting up fireworks, the skywalks have been papered so you can't see MPs walking across, the front door's locked. What, what do you think of that? That's how you're having to hold your caucus meeting? Well, I think it's, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that that's the angle of uh, democratic right that some people are taking, but it's their right to do it, um, you know, and uh, so we, business will go on, you know, I think that uh, I was in Ottawa, of course, during the, the occupation of the downtown, and, uh, you know, we, we can't forget that uh, that was finally resolved, you know, with uh, pretty much nobody getting hurt or anything else. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a funny aspect of democracy that we've actually lived with for a very, very long time, and, and it happens now. How are you feeling about the state of the party right now? Pretty good, actually. Um, you know, the, the fundamentals are all there. I, I think probably the, um, the focus of some of our discussions, at least the focus I will want to bring to it, is really, is really focus. Um, you know, if you count up all of the things in the minister's mandates, there's about 730 different things that these ministers are responsible for accomplishing. Well, we can't talk about them all. So if we can't talk about them all, what do we talk about? What are the, what are the priorities? And this again is where people like me who are at street level, 
will tell the party, well, this is what I'm hearing from the street. These are the things that are, are most bothering our constituents. And so it's a double-sided thing. What have we done? And more importantly, what are we prepared to do? That's that's really what we need so to talk looking about. looking for more direction here about focus, about what are we supposed to tell constituents at the door? No, we're not looking for direction. We're going to give direction. So what do you think is it in the new housing and affordability measures? Well, I think that that's uh, clearly the, um, you know, the, the, the main focus. And in that regard, I think that... Um, the new minister, Sean Fraser, uh, I mean, I saw very firsthand what he did at uh, immigration. Uh, this guy's got what it takes, I think, to come up with maybe something a little disruptive, but certainly something that's going to, uh, to change it. So do you see this as a policy challenge for the party or a uh, communication challenge? I think it's, a, it's always a bit of both. You, you have to assess what we're doing versus what the public wants and versus what they think they're getting. And sometimes where, you know, the, the mis there's a misunderstanding, you've got to get out and, and talk to them or consult with them or both. But where there's a policy, and I'll use gun control as an example, that's a policy where a lot of folks are, are offside with the government. But that's a policy gap we're not going to close. We firmly believe that certain weapons don't belong in the hands of civilians, and that's that. And those folks can vote with their, with their ballot the next time around. Should the, should the government be more aggressive or change its strategy when it comes to countering Pierre Polyev? Well, I mean, he did this summer what uh, Mr. Trudeau did back in the summer of 2014, out talking to people. Big difference is we didn't have to spend $3 million to burnish uh, Mr. Trudeau's reputation. He has, uh, Mr. Polyev has a $3 million coat of paint, but it's very thin. He's left better part of 20 years of very, very toxic behavior. You should go back and watch how he treated Jean Charest during the leadership convention for the, uh, for the Conservatives. Um, this is a, a person that, uh, if you really, really do know him, reasonable people will have serious questions. Was it a mistake to let the Liberals allow Mr. Polyev to put that $3 million out buy out and not trying to find him? Before he got the chance to find himself. I don't think so. I, I mean, that's just me and as uh, an ex-media communication guy for many, many years before this. Uh, you know, you, you have to respect his right to have his say. But the thing is that his reputation, his background, will actually reveal the truth about who he is. All right, there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm okay. How are you? Can you tell us how you're feeling getting into talks today and what you've been hearing on the doorsteps throughout the summer? Well, I'm feeling good. It's great to see all of my colleagues again. We separate like uh, seeds of a dandelion at the end of the spring and uh, coming together is really nice to be able to connect and hear about what people are thinking about, what they're working on. Um, on the doors, I've been hearing uh, largely about climate change, about some of the things people are talking about cost of living, of course. People are really scared about climate, though. I can tell you right now, um, I've been working with First Nations a lot, as you know, in my role, and the majority of evacuees are indeed Indigenous people. Um, their homes, their communities, their land is under threat, and so underneath all that fear is this like steady thrum of what's happening with our climate, and how are we as Canadians going to be not just part of the solution, but prepared for whatever comes next. So what do you make then of the, the, the poll lead, polling lead that the Conservatives have right now based on issues like affordability and inflation and the carbon tax? Well, I, listen, I can't, I'm no expert in polling. and I would suspect that the way that you ask, ask questions are the kinds of answers that you get. But I will say this, that underneath all of those concerns lies this deep anxiety about what's happening with our climate. And when we talk about food prices, of course, you know, the Conservatives are talking about a price on pollution as one of the only driver of the increased cost of foods. But we know that's not true. In fact, entire um, areas, arid areas, are getting wiped out as a result of the kinds of threats that we're seeing to the ability for farmers to grow. I was out in West in Saskatchewan with James Smith Cree. Their aquifers are drying up. They are unable to figure out what to do when the aquifers that feed their own community source water, that's how the conversation started, um, dry up. But they also talked about the agriculture, and many of them are involved in, in agriculture and pursuits and you can't water your plants um, if you don't have any water and so you know we're seeing this com compounding challenge of dealing with climate change and so I think to be honest this is a, a critical moment for Canada for Canadians and and for all of us to pull together to figure out 
not only what we're going to do to be part of a global effort to reduce our emissions, but also how we're going to keep our community safe and ready for whatever comes next. Last question. Well, I think we can't forget about those extraordinary and compounding costs for sure, because not only are they expensive for individuals and for businesses, I talked about agriculture, but there's lots of other businesses, uh, uh, lumber, for example, um, and the forestry sector is being, you know, very hard hit by the vast volume of, of um, uh, forest that's that's been burned this summer. Um, but I think we also have to keep costs on the mounting, we have to keep track of the mounting costs of responding to climate emergencies. So in my own department, for example, through the emergency management program, you know, I don't have the number now, but it's hundreds of millions of dollars that have been spent this year alone just responding to helping people get out of the way of uh, disasters. And then on top of that, when you factor in, you know, what the cost will be to rebuild, we're, ta we're hearing from insurance companies here in Canada now that are saying maybe they won't insure anymore in specific areas for specific um, disasters. Everybody's insurance is going to go up. So I think we can't think about it in a piecemeal way. We have to be thinking more broadly about how we're going to, as a country, uh, wrap our heads around the fact that, uh, as Elizabeth May says, even if we were to stop all emitting right now, we'll see a decade of, uh, of difficult weather. Mr. Thank Paul, you as well ahead of Mr. Trudeau right now. Do you think you've underestimated and the liberals have underestimated? I don't under underestimate anyone. Every battle is a battle. That's what politics is. It's a battle of ideas, and it's a battle of vision, and it's a battle of passion. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, you know, I guess, uh, first and foremost, how are you and your colleagues feeling right now, given the polling numbers that you've seen this summer? Uh, we've had a good summer. Um, I think that the, uh, the, the Prime Minister has uh, uh, traveled, been, been at home, he's been listening. I've been listening in my riding, and people have concerns. I mean, there's cost of living concerns, there's uh, housing attainability concerns. Uh, we hear that. Uh, but I think people also know these are long-term fixes, and uh, they're going to watch for us. What do you say right now, though, to the Canadians who have answered those pollsters, basically expressing that they don't believe the Liberals are the party to have the solution on those issues? I would say um, we're, we're ready to, to listen to them, and we're ready to find new ways to engage, and we'll keep doing it. What needs to be done specifically to turn things around for your party when it comes to that? How Canadians see your party? Polls are up and down. I mean, I've been... I've been in the game a long time, and I've seen governments uh, have uh, high ratings and low ratings. I've seen people get uh, distressed. Um, in my job, I get to travel the world, and I see world phenomena, and I see the, uh, the reality is that cost of living, uh, interest rates, um, uh, affordability are issues in many Western countries. And I think we will keep saying, um, when you look at the alternatives, we, we provide the best alternative. Is your party doing a good enough job communicating that, though? Uh, we can always do better. We can always do better. Mr. Felice of the Zoom measures, which of those measures include on affordability and housing? Uh, I, I think that we have to find ways to um, to help Canadians. We, we've had the largest transfer of, of income to poorer families to the Canada Child Benefit of any government ever. We'll continue to use imagination. We'll figure out something. Watch. Thanks. How are you guys feeling uh, with the late, recent round of polling numbers? Employee numbers, Employee polling, number. polling, polling numbers. numbers. Listen, I, um, we're going to have a lot of discussions around uh, what we stand for, what we're going to do going forward, uh, remaining positive in terms of the initiatives that we're taking. I get the opposition is trying to frame it in a very negative way, and that's their job. Um, but it seems as though they want things to be broken. They want seems to be uh, angry. And, and I, I, I'm newly elected, really. I've only been there a number of months now, and, and I'm very positive about the things I'm doing and certainly the reception I'm getting at home and I want to make a difference and I want to provide value and that's what I think my colleagues want as well. You're a former finance minister. Is this government that you have just joined doing enough to address affordability for the average Canadian? Well, we have to do more to support Canadians in a number of ways and increasing our economy, promoting business, supporting growth, to sustain those programs that are important to people is critical. And Canada has been doing well, notwithstanding some of the pressures that we're feeling and some of the pain that people have. We need to do and consider um, the ramifications of the, of, the, of the choices that people make, especially what the Conservatives are proposing, which will put things in, in, in harm's way. And we want to make certain that people are protected, we redistribute wealth where necessary, but we have to promote growth, we have to promote economic vitality, we have to support um, the very existence of, the, of Canada's uh, potential 
and there is tremendous potential. So I'm very positive about that. About, uh, the Conservatives, the opposition wanting to frame things negatively. So why give them the time and the ammunition to do that? You met uh, with the cabinet met in Charlottetown weeks ago to talk about housing, and the government has yet to come up with anything concrete on that, and it allowed the Conservatives to essentially use their convention to talk about how the government isn't. Uh, it, it is a sh it, yeah. There is a shared responsibility when it comes to housing and, and issues around affordability. We have to do and work collaboratively with the provinces and the municipalities, and we have to find ways to be constructive for the benefit of the individual con constituent. I mean, ultimately, we're all in this together for the benefit of those that are our neighbors and our friends. And you know, I live it too. And in my community, uh, you know, affordability in Mississauga Lakeshore is tough. Homes are very expensive, and uh, and. And we have a large community who require um, affordable housing, uh, sustainable and social programs, and so we're ba balancing that. But to blame and to create, um, to, just to, to propose problems and not provide solutions or offer alternatives, that's not the answer, right? We need to find ways to get things resolved. And for that, we need to work collaboratively. We need to be positive. And I know that will be a topic of great discussion for us as well. What's up your communication game? The, sorry? What's your interpretation of the Coletto numbers presented to caucus? What does that tell you needs to change? Um, I'll leave that to those that are watching them carefully. I watch what's happening at home, and I'm tell you, very sensitive to about what people are, need and what, it's, what I feel is required. And uh, that's – so my, my – my, uh, my game has always been to look at things long term. I don't, I don't follow election cycle politics. I'm trying to determine those decisions that sometimes take a while to make, and, and they don't come to fruition for some time after. So if I look for the long term benefit of what we're doing, that keeps me going, and that makes me, uh, and, and I feel proud of, of what I do in regards to that. What does the strategy have to change, and how? Well, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll let. Uh, um, those that after we, after we come out of these discussions, and we'll have a lot of discussions around our strategy and certainly around some of the issues that uh, are facing. Um, I mean, there's political concerns, but then there's also economic concerns and social concerns, and I'm really concerned about those last two. But given your, Thank you. Given your experience, though, as finance minister, what do you think? How do you get more houses built in the province? What's what's the best way forward on that? Stay tuned, right? We're gonna have, there will be a lot of discussions around this very issue. That's a big file. It's a big problem, and. Uh, we, um, we have a huge demand that's coming our way, and it's been there. I mean, uh, for the longest time when I was in the province, I was trying to find ways to soften that, uh, that, de that demand or at least lessen uh, the constraints. And certainly, um, we provided, uh, you know, speculator restrictions, trying to limit the degree at which families were being crowded out from buying a home. Um, but still, there's still a huge influx of demand coming our way. That's a positive thing for Canada's economy, but we have to make certain that we have everybody included in that growth. So we'll do our best. Your government has heard from policy experts who say they gave you concrete, they gave the government concrete solutions that the government could implement immediately. So why all this stalling? Why not come out and um, concrete measures on how? What's the mood in caucus right now? Yeah, I wouldn't say they're stalling, but we are going. We are addressing them. I mean, shouldn't Sean Fraser, the minister, is addressing these things as we speak? I mean, this is a priority for us. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.